Welcome everybody! Today we are going to learn how to get every single URL in a website in a very very easy way. On our last lesson we scraped the whole website up to the last book. But we are going to learn how to do it in an easier way with Crowdless Spider, Rules and Link Extractor. Today we are going to learn how to use the new spider, Crowdless Spider, what rules and link extractor are and how to scrape the whole website without effort. Pay attention because this lesson is going to open your eyes. Until now, everything we did helped us to do two simple things, getting the needed URLs or extracting the information. For example, we get here the URLs, we process the URL, and this extract the information from the books. But now, with Crawler Spider, we are going to make it simpler. Again, we are going to have two parts of the code. We want to get the URLs, like this one, and another to extract the information, like this one. We are going to use the same structure to extract the information, this, but we are going to improve how we extract the URLs. We are going to make it simpler with Crawler Spider. We are going to pick it up from the last lesson. This is our current spider. As I said before, here we get the books, here we extract the books URL, we prefix with catalog if it doesn't have it, and here we yell request to book URL and we parse the book here. After we are done with the 20 books, we get the next URL and if exist, here, we are going to prefix it with catalog if it doesn't have it, and we are going to request that URL that is going to give us 20 books again. And this process is going to repeat again and again until we are done. As you can see, the pass method is too messy. This one. Sorry about that. It is so hideous that I'm going to delete it. I don't like it. Remember that we are going to simplify the extraction of the URLs. That is why I remove it. Now, see the scrappy spider. This spider is too stupid. I don't like it. So, I'm going to delete it. We are going to use crawler spider instead. So, crawler spider. And of course, we need to import it. From scrappy spider import. So, remember that spider always calls the parse method to start reading the code? This one is smarter. We can tell the crawler spider how do we want to scrape the website. But to do so, we need to set ground rules, right? Crawler spider, besides having the same attributes as the regular spider, has a new attribute, rules. Rules is a list of one or more rule objects, where each rule defines one type of behavior for crawling the site. While rules set the behavior of how it's going to crawl the site, link extractor sets how links are going to be extracted. So let's import the rule and link extractor and then define the rules. Besides crawl the spider, we are going to import rule and from scrapy link extractors import link extractor. Now rules, we come here, rules equals a list of rules and this is the first and only one now link structure and we are going to allow only catalog I'm going to explain it later callback callback parse filter book and follow true so, here we import the resource and we create one rule. In this rule, we are going to set how links are going to be extracted, from where and what to do with them. First, we set allow catalog. Now, if the URL does not have catalog in it, we won't even process it. Way better than the ifs we used before, right? We also have a callback. A callback in programming is what we are going to do after the current process is done. In this case, means after getting a valid URL, call the parse filter book method and follow through. 
this just tells that if link are nested, we should follow them. This way, we get every URL no matter how deep. And now we change parseBook to parseFilterMethodBook. Sorry, parseFilterBook. And now we run the code. But let me delete this. Save. And, whoops. Oh, sorry. This is crawl spider. And now. Hmm, we got an error. Attribute error, non-type, object, has no attribute to replace. Of course, we are extracting every URL in the code, not only the box, but each pagination and every URL the, the spider can find. For example, this one, but also this, and home, and the second pagination URL. You are trying to extract this, for example, this, for every URL, and not everyone has this attribute, or this one, or this one. We should only use the parse filter method if the page is a valid book URL. So, inside the parse filter book, we are going to perform a small check. If the URL is a book URL, we are going to extract the, da the data. If not, we don't do nothing. But how do we know if a URL belongs to a book or to a other URL? Well, let's open a book URL and a non-book URL, like this one. Now we need to look for an element from books that is not in the non-books URLs. For example, we need to find something here that is not here. Inspect or F2, 12, sorry. <laughs> For example, I have noticed that books have a product gallery class. Product gallery. I'm going to copy it. And this is a non book URL. And I'm going to try to find it. And we have no results here. We can use this to separate from the books URLs from the non books URLs. So let's come back to the code. And we need to modify the code. We are going to check the response expat and we are going to find the div with that id. It was in a class, sorry. Div id and I'm going to extract it and I'm going to save this in a variable exist. If exist this is the equivalent of is true. We can simplify it like this. And if exists, we are going to extract everything. So we need to indent it. And if not, else, we are going to just print the response URL. Response URL. The key are the first two lines. This one. We extract exist. And if we are successful, we are going to extract everything. If not, we just print it. Let's run the code now. Save the code. Remove the JSON. And fingers crossed. Let's see. Let's go to the end. And our thoughts and box are there. Nice. Let's check the code. And as you can see, this catalog books, this is not a book URL, so we have no process it here. Everything has a title, an image, so every line here is a book. And we have got this URL, but we don't we can scrap it, so we didn't. Today we have learned how a crawler works, to set rules and leak extractor, to extract every URL in the website, and that we have to filter the URLs received to extract the data from the bulk URLs and not every single one. This was a huge leap. 
Using Crawler Spiders helps you to simplify the code a lot, as you saw here. This was an easy example, but what if instead of books, we have books, musical instruments, food, as in Amazon? For example, this. Without Crawler Spiders, this will be insane. Doable, but insane. You are welcome to try. You have a base understanding now from Scrapy. Now we need to go deeper. On the next lesson, we will learn how pipelines and items works. This. But before that, right now you know how to get the URLs needed using Spider and the Crawler Spider, how to extract data using SPAT, and how to yield the information to a file. Now it's time to work on your own. Look for an easy website to scrape and try to scrape it by yourself. You can use help such as looking for past lessons, searching Google, looking into scraping documentation, etc. But you need to do it by yourself. After that, leave a comment here with the website you scrape it and your code, so everybody can see how you managed to do it on your own and how proud you are. And if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel to get notified when I upload more videos, like the video and I will see you on my next video.